What's up, beautiful people? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. This is a collective reading for anybody and everybody who clicks on this video. Let's take a deep breath together. Inhale. And exhale. Thank you. Please keep in mind that this reading may not resonate with you. Only take what feels right and leave the rest for somebody else. Please hit the like button for me, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't yet already. The message that I'm supposed to deliver to you today is that you've always been good enough. And I want you to really like hear this message. You've always been good enough. You are good enough right now. You were good enough back then and you will be good enough in the future. But it's really important that you know that you've always been good enough because I'm getting that some of you are reflecting a lot on the past or there's like triggers or trauma from the past that's like resurfacing. And some of you are thinking a lot about the past. You're like, well, I wish I could go back or I wish I could have done this or whatever. And Spirit wants you to know that you've always been good enough, okay? They want you to stay in the present moment as much as possible because the past is gone and we can't get it back, right? It doesn't exist anymore. And the future doesn't exist either, but it's good to plan and prepare for the future and to manifest and envision for the future, right? But your guys want you to stay in the present moment because you're creating your future right now in the present moment. And so the message that I'm getting today is that you've always been good enough. And some of you in the past, you had people who made you feel like you weren't good enough. And I'm here to tell you that it's because they, confirmation burp, excuse me, they didn't feel good enough. And so they were trying to use you to fill a void in their life. You were never going to be good enough to fill the void in their life, period. Like no matter how hard you tried and no matter who you were, nobody is ever going to be able to fill a void for someone else. It's impossible. Only we can fill that void for ourselves and then we will attract people outside of ourselves who are whole and complete themselves, right? So some of these people from your past made you feel like you weren't good enough, but it's because they felt like they weren't good enough. And so they were trying to bring in somebody perfect to fill the void for them. And that was never going to happen. It's literally impossible to do that, right? So I just need you to know that you've always been good enough. And then there was another message that was coming through, but I haven't recorded you, I haven't recorded in like two weeks because I've been going through depression and a dark night of the soul. So it's like everything is starting to just like come in at once, like all of the channel messages, all of the downloads, all of you saying hi, all of you like reconnecting with my energy. It's a lot, but I welcome it and I'm very grateful for it. And I'm grateful for your patience with me and I'm grateful for all of the love and support that you send me. You've always been good enough. All of the other messages about sobriety. So some of you are on a sober journey and some of you are like thinking about being sober, like quitting smoking, quitting vaping, quitting weed, quitting alcohol, whatever. Um, and I'm getting that you're being guided to do that because you're going to feel so much better and you're going to feel so much more aligned and feel like yourself. And I am on my sobriety journey. I've been sober for a while now and like I'm not smoking. Um, if I do drink, it's a non-alcoholic beer or a mocktail. But I'm getting that some of you are being bullied for your sobriety or some of you, um, people are just attacking you or making weird little jokes about your sobriety. And it's because they need validation to continue their bad habits. Mm -hmm. They need validation to continue their bad habits because think about it. If you are somebody who is drinking, smoking, doing drugs regularly, there's a part of you that's telling you that that's not right. There's a part of you that's telling you that this isn't good for you. Now, of course, sure, everything's okay for you in moderation and I'm not here to judge anybody. I still like weed, I still like THC, and I probably will smoke it every once in a while, but what I'm saying here is that some of these people have created really bad habits for themselves, and there's a part of them within that's telling them that they need to make a change or that they should stop doing this or that maybe this isn't good for them, but they see you, whoever I'm speaking to, myself included, who is sober and who is going through some sort of sobriety journey, and that triggers them because that shows them that what they're doing is a bad habit and it's not validating this bad habit for them. So their ego is like attack, defend, protect our bad habit, right? So if any of you are dealing with that, it's just because these people know that they're doing something bad for themselves. They know that they're harming themselves. They know that they're poisoning themselves, but they see you doing better without it and it doesn't validate them continuing the bad habit, right? I am also getting that some of you are seeing past versions of yourself in other people. The Neville Goddard, I think it's Neville Goddard, um, everyone is you pushed out. 
theory is really coming up for me lately. And especially in the sobriety thing, I'm getting that some of you are sober, you're working on your sobriety and you're being shown people who remind you of your past self when you weren't sober and when you were in those bad toxic habits for yourself. And I'm getting that these people are going to live a similar cycle that you had to. So they are going to reach a point that you did and have the breakdown and have the self-discovery and have the awakening to become sober or to cut out these bad habits. But right now you're seeing the version of yourself that was in that cycle too, that was in those bad habits too. Some of you are being placed in these people's lives to give them inspiration and motivation and maybe even like to help them, but you don't have to go out of your way to help them because it is not your job to fix other people's problems, right? Unless you're getting paid for it and unless that's your job title. But 99% of you, it is not in your job title or job description to be fixing other people's problems, right? Especially strangers, especially people who are just like projecting onto you. I'm getting that some of this could be like coworkers or family members who are seeing you sober. And like I said, it's not validating their own poor choices and it's not validating their own bad habit, their own bad habits. So they're projecting onto you, they're bullying you, they're making weird jokes. Yeah. I also have been like really struggling with watching other people think that it's cool to like poison yourself and watching other people think that like drugs are cool, especially like cocaine. It's really bad here in Los Angeles. Like drug addiction and sex addiction is really bad in Los Angeles. And I'm an empath, I'm an intuitive, I channel a lot. So I've been picking up on all of it. And I just watch people like think that it's cool to do these things. And like, I don't resonate with that. I don't think that it's cool. But I'm of course never going to like judge you for your choices because it's your body, it's your choice. It's you, right? You doing that has nothing to do with me. But it's just strange to me when people think that it's cool and then they like peer pressure other people to do it and then they judge people like you and I who are trying to be sober and who are trying to take care of our bodies and who are trying to like live a long life because we don't think that those things are cool. I watched this interview. This is where it's coming from. I watched this interview a couple of weeks ago and there was like three guys and they were talking about Molly and they were talking about MDMA and then towards the end of it, the one guy was like, do you have any Molly? Because he was like excited about it. And the one, the guy who was like an actual doctor, excuse me, yeah, was an actual doctor, was like, well, legally, technically, I can't say whether I do or not. But it's like, if that's your answer, if that's your response, we can all read between the lines, buddy. Like we can all read between the lines. And so I was like, this is on a public forum, like this is on a public platform and we're just out here saying like, oh, it's cool to do Molly, it's cool to do drugs, it's cool to do cocaine. I don't resonate with that. So I just wanted to say that, I just wanna talk about it. Of course, these are my opinions and you're allowed to have your opinions too, but I'm really realizing in life that like, if I have an opinion, I'm allowed to share it. I've tolerated too much in the past and I've been quiet and silenced too long in the past. So I'm gonna express my opinion. If you don't like it, that's okay. If you do like it, that's okay too. Let's see what's coming out for you with the cards. I pulled out the Modern Witch Tarot and I am a little rusty, so please bear with me, but we'll see what comes out in these cards. The Modern Witch Tarot like always spills the tea for me, like always tells the truth. So be ready for that, okay? You have been warned. And this deck likes to move fast. So if my speech speeds up, that's why. I love this first card though. This is your first confirmation that you're on the right path. The universe will send you a confirmation as well. The Page of Wands is a confirmation of good news, positive results, things are working. I just did a Virgo reading on my Virgo channel, another Virgo channel, it's in the description box down below if you have Virgo placements or wanna check it out. And the first message I got for them is that everything is always working. Everything you're doing is working. Even if you aren't seeing the results, it's working. And there's been a lot of like, loud noises outside. I'm sorry about that. I can't control that, but it feels like that's all confirmation of what I'm saying too. Everything is working. So this is your confirmation that what you've been doing is working. The self-improvement has been working. The manifesting has been working. The journaling has been working. The healing has been working. Whatever you've been doing, it's working. Even if you're not seeing results right now. So continue, keep going. Persistence, okay? Persistence is key. Page of Wands is your first confirmation. And then we're seeing the sun. Can it get any better than that, right? And I keep getting this message, it's always darkest before the dawn. So some of you might've been going through a dark night of the soul. You might've been feeling really emotional, a lot of heavy emotions, a lot of darkness. You've been transmuting some pain and some trauma from your past. 
and the sun is here to remind you that it's always darkest before the dawn and that the breakdowns always lead to breakthroughs. Absolutely. I'm hearing they can't keep you down or they can't break your soul. So it might feel like there are some people here who want to keep you stuck or who want to see you fail, people who are preying on your downfall, but it won't work. It can't work. It's also weird because I'm getting this message about like gang stalking or like people ganging up, especially if it has to do with sobriety because this could be like your coworkers. Like, let me just give you an example, but for some of you, this is gonna be specific. Let's say you're the only sober one in your entire group at work. And let's say there's like 10 to 15 coworkers that you work with and they all like to go out to the bars and they all like to go out drinking and they all like to have parties on the weekend and then you see them like snorting cocaine and different things like that. But you're not doing that you are the light source, right? You are the earth angel. And I'm not trying to say that one is good or bad, right? I think that it's neutral here. But what I'm getting is it's like these 15 people, because they're all in that collective, because they're all in this group and because they all drink and they all do drugs and they all think it's okay and they want validation from each other, but they're not getting validation from you, they're ganging up on you. Right? So it's like 15 against one. For some of you, like you're in my case, it's thousands against one. I have been dealing with spiritual attack from like thousands, tens of thousands of people recently. And I'm one person. And I've been transmuting it all. And I haven't been projecting it back. I haven't been sending it back. I've been transmuting it all and alchemizing it all. It's just crazy to me that like people will gang up on one person. Do you realize how powerful you are? Do you realize how bright your light is? Do you realize how angelic you have to be to get thousands of people to gang up on you? To get groups of people to gang up on you, right? Because this could be like three people, this could be five people, this could be 15 people, it could be thousands of people ganging up on you. And you're one person. And what's crazy is you don't even have to defend yourself. The angels are doing it for you. The universe is doing it for you. You don't have to defend yourself. Your guides really just want you to focus on joy and fun, however you can do that. They want you to have fun, they want you to be creative, they want you to be joyous, however you can do that. They want you to focus on that. I have been getting something about like a flop era recently. It's coming out here too. Um, I feel like I'm in my flop era and I'm okay with admitting that and I'm okay with claiming that energy because the flop era actually is very liberating. It's very freeing to be in your flop era because who's watching, because who cares? right? If you're flopping, then people aren't checking for you. People aren't really caring about you. It doesn't really matter what you do, right? So in my flop era, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to be creative. And it allows me to have more freedom and to have liberation to just throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And if nothing sticks, then guess what? It's more opportunity for me to continue to create and throw more things at the wall. And so that's how I'm looking at it. Some of you might feel like you're in a flop era too. Like the views are down, the likes are down, the work isn't working, you're not seeing the results, so on and so forth. Apply it to your situation how you see fit. But your guides want you to embrace the flop era. Have fun with it. It's so freeing. And you won't be in the flop era forever. That's the beauty of this. So you might as well embrace the flop era while you're there. I just saw 333 as well. Have fun creating. Have fun making bad art. And that's the thing, like... When I say bad art, I don't even really mean bad art because art is subjective. Art isn't supposed to be liked by everybody. That's also something that I've been learning and like really channeling is that my art isn't going to be liked by everybody. My creations and what I put out into the world isn't going to be liked by everybody. My words, my opinions, my thoughts aren't going to be liked by everybody. But what I've learned is that if everybody did like what I was doing and everybody did like my art and my creations, I probably wouldn't enjoy doing it it would be boring. Art is meant to create conversation. Art is meant to evoke emotion. So if you're doing that, then it's working. Then your art is good art, in my opinion. But that's the thing, is that art is subjective. So while one person might think that your singing is bad or that your art is bad or that your writing is bad or that your videos are bad, there's another person out there who thinks that you are the best they've ever seen, they've ever encountered, and they are so excited for what's next, right? And so that's what I've been getting is like, sure, some of you might feel like you're creating bad art, but keep doing that. Keep throwing whatever you can at the wall until something sticks. 
and know that it's subjective because like I said, one person might think it's bad, but another person might think it's the best thing they've ever seen and you're going to inspire them and motivate them to keep going. And that's where I've been at lately. It's like, if my bills are paid and I helped one person throughout the day, I'm good. I don't care if I'm in my flop era. I'm gonna just keep creating and have fun with it and like share my singing videos and share my random opinions and share whatever I want to share and put it out there because who cares, right? Like who cares? Okay, back to your reading. I felt like somebody needed to hear those messages too though. Can we talk about this good news? The Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, that came up in the Virgo reading too. So you might be a Virgo as well or have Virgo placements. Thanks for watching both channels. I appreciate you and love you so much. The wheels are turning in your favor. The tables are turning. It's always darkest before the dawn. Yep, it's always darkest before the dawn. That's Florence and the Machine. I just don't know what song it is. Dog days are over, maybe. Probably not. Some of you, if you know, will you put in the comments for me? I just know it's Florence and the Machine, but it's always darkest before the dawn. What's this good news? Positive results. Ooh, Eight of Swords. I'm seeing some of you like climbing out of the trenches, the mental trenches. And then we're seeing the Two of Wands. Okay, some of you are moving or relocating and you're getting good news about that. I'm getting something about you've been like stressed or worried about like a, a move, a relocation, a trip, a job, or a relationship. Keep in mind, I read for a collective of people, right? Like a collective, thousands of people. So sometimes the messages are going to resonate for you and sometimes they're not. And when I pick up on a giant group of people, I'm picking up on little different pockets, right? So please apply it to your situation, how it fits. But I'm getting that you're coming out of this like despair because there is like a desperation energy that I'm channeling here with the Eight of Swords, but it feels like it's like mental. Like we're in our head, we're self-sabotaging, we're telling ourselves we're not good enough, we're telling ourselves we're not worthy, we're having a hard time believing in good things, so on and so forth. But that's what you're coming out of, that's what the good news is. So I'm getting that for some of you, if it has to do with like a home or an apartment or a move, you're going to get some sort of good news surrounding that. If it has to do with a job situation, maybe you're in a job situation where you feel stuck and you're unhappy, there's going to be a job that comes up for you, a new job opportunity that comes in for you. That's going to be this good news that I'm talking about. You're going to get hired. That application is going to be accepted. If this has to do with the relationship, I'm getting that you're going to get some sort of good news about this relationship. Like you're going to find out that you've just been in your head. This person actually does like you. This person does want to commit to you. This person does want to date you. This person does love you, so on and so forth. So like I said, take it how it resonates, but that is part of the good news here. And like I said, I literally see some of you like climbing out of the trenches of your mind and starting to believe again. So something is coming in here to help you believe in miracles, to help you believe in good things, to help you believe in yourself. And I'm also getting something about like a decision you made is going to get some sort of confirmation or validation. So you might've made a decision to leave a job behind or to leave a environment behind or to leave a person behind. And you're going to get validation or confirmation that that was the right decision for you. This reading is your first confirmation that you made the right decision but some of you, you will get confirmation outside of the reading as well. Tell me about the sun card. What's the sun card? That's too many. Mm, five of wands. Yeah. This is really just reiterating what I was talking about, about how your light shines so bright that there's people who like try to tear you down, but don't let them. Nothing that they say is actually going to work against you. But the Five of Wands is a card of competition. And I'm reading as a card of jealousy too. There are people here who want to have your destiny, who want to swap destinies with you, who want to have your light, who want to have your personality, who want to have your popularity, so on and so forth. But they can't take what's yours. They're competing with themselves, right? And like I said, some of you are doing so much like self-improving and there's upgrades happening in your life and you're sober and all of these things. And there are people here who are not being validated by you. And when they see you, it's not validating their bad choices and their bad behavior. And so that's why they're projecting. That's why they're trying to like fight and compete and whatever. 
Let's keep going though. The Five of Wands could be coworker energy too. Whether you actually work with these people or not, these people could be in like the same industry as you and they're trying to compete. I got this message a couple of days ago about me being a false light reader and yet here's the angel card coming out and here is the sun card coming out, but that's okay. You're allowed to believe what you wanna believe. If I'm a fake light worker, if I'm a false prophet to you, that's fine. But it's so funny that it's coming out here because a couple of days ago I got this like passive aggressive comment from somebody. He didn't come out and say that I was like a false light reader. He said something in response to my reading that also said about false light readers. It was something like maybe they're playing like these false light readers or something weird like that. My intuition told me that this person was trying to call me a fake light reader, a fake light worker, a false prophet. I wanted to give this person the benefit of the doubt, but my guides were like, no, stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. Stop tolerating nonsense. Block them. And I said, okay, I will. But it's just funny because that's exactly what's coming out here too. And then the horns are honking as well. Oh God. Um, it's just funny because there are people here who see your light and they're trying to dim your light. They're trying to prey on your downfall and tear you down because they can't see the light within themselves. And really what I got is that I do irk people's demons. I do shine the darkness on people. I do shine the light on people which illuminates the darkness within you. However, that is just me. I'm not doing it on purpose. I don't like walk into people's life and be like, here's the light, here's all of your problems, here's everything you're doing wrong, be better. Like, I don't do that, right? I don't do that. But naturally my energy does that to them within themselves. So that person trying to call me a false light reader, or false prophet, whatever the hell they wanna call me, is really just drawn to me because their darkness sees the light within me, but their darkness is not acknowledged by them, so they can't acknowledge the light within me, which made so much sense to me. These people are like battling with themselves. There's a lot of inner work that they need to do, and there's a lot of like inner battles that they're facing, and then they're projecting onto people like you and I who are of the light, and who are light workers, and who are earth angels, and who are empaths. Okay, I don't feel like hanging on to that energy anymore, but it's showing up, definitely. So some of you people might be calling you a fake light worker or calling you demonic or whatever. I really wouldn't pay any mind, but I hope that you know it's just because you honor the light and the dark within you and these people refuse to accept their darkness, so their darkness is naturally drawn to you and their darkness has been neglected and neglected and neglected for who knows how long, and they see that you are in alignment with both your inner darkness and your inner light, and they're triggered. They're triggered. Let's keep going, one more on the sun card. The world. It's always darkest before the dawn. Something is complete. Something is over. Some sort of lesson has been learned. I'm getting something about like a mission completed. I'm seeing like check marks. Um, Okay, yeah, and then when, you know, the Eight of Wands comes out, I was literally seeing, like, a list in my mind of things being, like, checked off. That's kind of what this looks like to me. Like, we have all of these lists, we have all of these things on our to-do list, on our mission, and you've checked them all off. So now you can move into a different timeline. Now you can move into a different era, into a new world. You're creating a new world for yourself, and things are working. The Eight of Wands is always a sign of forward movement, of progression, it's also a sign of communication. So some of you have been waiting on some sort of communication and it's coming in. Maybe about this job, maybe about this home, maybe about a relationship, maybe about like a crush, because sometimes my page of wands is a crush card too. And I'm getting that somebody who you have a crush on also has a crush on you. Dun, 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 dun. And you're gonna be finding that out very soon. Your intuition is already telling you this. So I'm not like feeding any delusions. Some of your, your intuition is telling you that this person is attracted to you, that this person likes you, that this person has a crush on you too. But maybe they aren't making a move on you. Maybe they're like not really communicating to you. Maybe they're coming off as a little distant. And so that's where the Eight of Swords energy is coming from. That's where this like self-sabotage, imposter syndrome, I'm just crazy, I'm delusional is coming from. But I see them making action. I see them taking action and communicating with you and letting you know that they like you. Okay, tell me about this. I've been getting a lot of love messages lately, so don't hate the player, hate the game. Don't shoot the messenger. 
I'm a lover. I am. And I realized that I was like pushing love away for so long, but I'm done doing that. I want love in my life. I want a relationship in my life. I want a husband. I want commitment. Like I want these things and I'm done pretending that I don't. And I'm done letting other people be pissed off at love and allowing that to affect me. Right? And so I'm like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about higher love. And that's what's happening. The Queen of Cups. And I've been channeling November for such a long time. You can go back to a bunch of my readings on this page. I've been talking about November for unconditional love and like real love manifesting. And it's here. I really feel that it's happening this November. There could be something about November 8th that's significant. I don't know, today's the 6th, right? And I'm seeing the 8th here, so November 8th could be significant. I'm also getting November 22nd and November 25th. All of those dates could be significant for this love connection or for like a date or something with this love energy. But I'm getting that this person, like, they see the divine in you. They see the divinity in you. They see the temperance in you. They see how you have healed. They see how you have grown. They see how you have alchemized and taken your light and dark and created the oneness within yourself. I hope that makes sense, but I am really getting here that this person, like, they see all of you and they appreciate all of you. This is a soulmate. I usually don't use labels because I don't really think that the labels matter. And I think that if we get too far into the labels, the soulmate, the karmic partners, the twin flames, it becomes very messy. So I try really hard to like stay away from the labels, but it's interesting that I'm labeling this because I feel like that's an omen. I feel like that's a part of this reading. I, this is a soulmate. <laughs> the temperance card, this is a soulmate. Um, and this is your confirmation that this person that you're crushing on or this person that you're thinking about is a soulmate for you. Again, only if it resonates. But what I feel is so significant about that is that I labeled it. And I'm getting that this person is going to want to label the connection. So many of us have dealt with situationships. And so many of us have dealt with people who never committed to us, never really truly loved us, never gave us reassurance, so on and so forth. But that's what's different about this person. They want to put a label on it. They want to claim you and this relationship. So that's why I feel like it's so significant and important that I called this a soulmate. Because like I said, I normally don't do that. But this person, like, they want to put a label on it. There is no what are we, you know? I know some of you know what I'm talking about, where like you go time in weeks, months, sometimes years without really ever fully knowing what the connection is because nobody's defining it, because we're not having the conversation, because the other person isn't putting a label on it. But that's not happening in this situation. You don't even have to ask, what are we? This person, like, they ask you, like, will you be my girlfriend? Will you be my boyfriend? Can we make this official? Will you marry me? Like, you know what this person wants in this connection because they communicate it, because they tell you it, right? Like, because they put a label on it. So you don't ever have to ask, what are we? You will know. One more card here for the temperance card. And then we're seeing the empress. You really called this in, didn't you? Oh, wow, you've been manifesting. And you don't need to do anything else for this love. You don't need to manifest anymore for this love. You don't need to write the love letters. Really, all you need to do is live, breathe, have fun. Go with the flow here, though. Like, try not to rush anything with this situation. Try to just take it one day at a time, one step at a time. If they aren't communicating to you today, that's okay. Maybe they'll communicate to you tomorrow or next week. But just keep living your life without the expectation here. There was another message that was coming through with that. Oh, I'm getting something about visualization. So you don't need to do any more work. Like, you are lovable as you are. I'm getting something about, like, body image or weight here. Some of you might be feeling, like... I hate to say this, but some of you might be feeling like you're not the prettiest. You might be feeling like you're ugly or like you're a little chubby or like you need to lose weight. And Spirit is saying, no, you are lovable as you are right now. If you want to continue to improve on your health and your weight and your appearance, then by all means. But Spirit is saying that you are lovable as you are and this person 
doesn't need you to lose any more weight or doesn't need you to be anybody else. Like this person is completely enamored with you and who you are right now in this current present moment. This person sees the real you and this person can see like your higher self. It's so interesting. Like the way that you look in the mirror is not how you present to this person. I don't know if that makes any sense, but the way that you present to this person is like this goddess, god, ethereal, higher version of yourself person. Like this person sees the future you. Like this person sees the version of you that you are striving to become. And I think that that is so beautiful because they aren't seeing this version of you in the mirror. Like this person thinks that you're hot right now. This person thinks that you're beautiful right now. This person thinks that you're good enough and worthy as you are right now. So hopefully that helps some of you. I've just been getting that some of you might feel like you're not good enough yet, or like you're not ready yet, or like you're not pretty enough or skinny enough or whatever right now, but that's not the case. You are good enough. You've always been good enough and you will always be good enough. Circling back to the beginning of the reading, right? You've always been good enough. And this person's going to show you that you've always been good enough. This connection is going to prove to you that you've always been good enough and that you don't have to be somebody else or do anything else to be unconditionally loved and to be loved. This person loves you for who you are. But I am getting something about visualization. So no, you don't need to do anything more to bring this love in, but I am getting that visualization could help you. Maybe if you visualize like a date with this person, like if you just close your eyes and visualize you and this person going on a date. And if you don't have a person in mind, that's okay. Imagine like a blob. Sometimes if I don't have like a crush or if I don't have somebody who I am romantically interested in, I will just imagine like a blob. So there's no face, there's no real like body. It's just kind of like a blob with like a question mark. And I will envision myself with that energy. So whether it's a person that you already know and that you're trying to be with or somebody who you don't know, I want you to just envision it, close your eyes and think about like the date with them. Where are you guys at? What are you guys talking about? What does it look like around you? How do you feel in this energy? Maybe it's a trip that you go on with this person. Maybe it's like laying in bed with this person. Like, what are you doing? Are you watching a movie? Are you just cuddling? Like, so on and so forth. That's what I feel like you're being guided to do in terms of, like, still manifesting if you want to. But just know that you don't have, any, you don't have to do anything else to be worthy of love. You are worthy of love just because you're breathing and existing right here and now. Okay. Let's get one last card for the collective. Last card here for the collective. How would you like to end this reading, please? What does this card say? It says value. You can't even see it, but it says value. Like I said, you are good enough right here and right now. You are valuable here and now. This card says um, priorities, self-worth, and appreciation. And it's showing up on this love energy that I'm tapping into. And for some of you, it isn't about like another person being your soulmate. It's about you being your own soulmate and you changing the way that you speak to yourself and prioritizing self and knowing your self-worth and really appreciating yourself and doing all of the things necessary to show yourself that you value yourself. That's like what you're stepping into. But for others of you, there is like this love romantic connection here where somebody does want you to know how much they value you. They want to prioritize the connection with you. They see your worth. They appreciate you. We're seeing a stalemate, which is so funny because I feel like some of you are playing chess with this person. It's weird because it's not like a mind game. It's not like one of those like cat and mouse games because I don't like games when it comes to love. I don't. I don't. I would rather just play a video game at home than play a game with you. But... What I'm getting here is that I'm seeing chess pieces and it feels like you're playing chess with this person. And what I'm really getting here is that this person's afraid of being hurt by you or this person's afraid of rejection. And it also feels like this person may not feel like they are ready yet because this person may be very like career focused or career and family focused and they didn't really like see themselves in a relationship or like having love in that way. But then there's you, like you just popped up, you just showed up and they're like, I need this, but it's not like in a needy codependent way. You know what I mean? They're like, I just need this relationship. This is my soulmate. This is my person. So right now we're playing chess. Okay, it does feel like we're playing the long game here, but try to just enjoy the mystery of it. Try to enjoy the game of it, of chess, okay? Because this person will come forward and all of this will be settled and it will all make sense in the near future. And then we're seeing voices which is showing up on this other energy. And it says karmic influence and at odds. So not to like keep 
beating a dead horse, but there are definitely outside voices who are trying to project onto you, who are trying to compete with you, who are jealous of you, who are jealous of your light, who are trying to say that you're a false prophet, that you're a fake light worker, that you're never gonna have love, that God doesn't love you, that you've been forgotten about, but those are just voices. None of that is true, unless you believe it's true, right? But I'm telling you that it's not true. I'm telling you that it's just a voice and it's just a projection. But I think it's interesting that I said beating a dead horse. I know that that's like a phrase, but I'm getting that that's what's dead. The old version of you, the imposter version of you, the self-sabotage version of you, the version of you who doesn't think that you're good enough, those voices in your head are dying and they are dead because you do deserve good things, you do deserve love, you are valuable, you do deserve wealth and abundance and prosperity and friendship and all of the things that you've been manifesting for yourself. You are worthy and deserving of them for breathing, for existing, period. You don't need to do anything else to be worthy and deserving of these things, okay? Let the voices talk. I'm hearing talk is cheap. And I'm also hearing hit dogs holler. And there was this message that I got today from a friend who was telling me that this girl watched one of her YouTube videos and then approached her at the gym to try to call her out for talking about her in the YouTube video. But this girl never ever talks to my friend. So it's like strange that this person would stalk my friend on social media and then approach them in the gym to say something about her YouTube video. And my response to that is, first of all, that's weird behavior. And secondly, if you didn't want me talking about what you did, you shouldn't have done it. So I will leave you all with that. And I hope that this helps somebody out there. I'm sending you love always. Take care of yourself, stay hydrated, and I will see you next time. Peace.